morning everyone. The sun is shining but my goodness there is a bite in the air that feels so autumnal. It is unreal which is perfect because today is autumn install day. Now I am wearing one of my favourite pieces from my Karen Millen collection I will show you upstairs. It's this stunning shirt dress. Look at the way it fits on the shoulders. That never happens for me. Oh my goodness. This feels like um, it almost feels like, how do I explain it, like suiting but in a shirt dress. I love how like structured the collar is. It just feels so smart, so easy to accessorize. Anyway, this is my outfit for the day but I'm going to need to put on a pinafore because it is autumn install day. Gemma is coming over and we're just going to give the house a really new lease of life. We're thinking potted ferns, potted ivy. I have definitely found that potted ferns, well, potted ivy is one that does so well inside. So if you're looking, if you're not maybe wanting to change out so much, you're wanting a bit of evergreen in your house um, more often than not, um, then I would 110% say have ivy, like big pots of ivy. You can get really beautiful, big plants of it. Um, and you can make such like theatrical displays. I have so much ivy in my dressing room. It looks wonderful. Um, I was also kind of thinking about a bit of a hops install somewhere, like I don't know whether above the cooker or over the fireplace. I was just feeling a bit hoppy this morning, well last week when we were talking about it. I did treat myself to one new candle. Now I know in previous installs I go a little bit like over the top and blah blah blah. Um, this candle is super like expensive. I really just wanted to have like a special candle. So I'm gonna unbox that with you quickly. Um, but I love seasonal fragrances. We're about to publish a blog post um, all about autumn seasonal fragrances that you can access and um, shop if you're looking for something new, whether that's to wear, whether that's for your home. I also have some accessories because as we move into October, I will likely bring some of like my gourds and my pumpkins and my crown princes inside and use them as decoration and just kind of store them inside. But um, I've got some really beautiful natural material uh, pumpkins if you want to add something a little bit, not, not so twee, but still like very, very seasonal, very, very festive for the Halloween season as well. I don't necessarily do like full on, you know, like orange and things like that. I'm, I'm not really, like I like to keep things fairly natural looking, natural tones. I mean, orange is obviously a natural tone, but like the seasonal elements from outside in. So big displays, that kind of thing, um, but using natural, natural Ujimi flips, you know? Anyway, I'm hoping that the house is gonna be really lovely. It is gonna be hectic here today because we're obviously gonna be installing and um, then I've also got our like housekeepers here. So it's just gonna be like, it's gonna be a busy, busy day. And then I've got all the girls here as well. So, and it's a birthday. I love doing these things because they give my home like a real freshness. Often when we're doing it as well, I'll organize, I'll put away any bits that are kind of cluttering the sides. You know how life just like leaves clutter everywhere. I take this as a really good opportunity to like declutter sides. If I'm able to declutter any cupboards or drawers, I'll do it then because seasonal refreshes for me are extremely cathartic and I enjoy planning for them. I love being inspired for them. And it's something that keeps life fresh. Now you may not want to do anything like this. I know that there are people that just are really, really happy with their homes looking like the same all the time. And honestly, I get it. Sometimes it can be like, um, it can be a lot, can't it? Sometimes Christmas is just enough for all of us. Me personally, you'll know, I'm a HSP and I'm very, very like affected by the rooms that I'm in, the environments that I'm in, even little things. So like, you might not know this, but the girls in my office often leave me post-it notes and their post-it notes are generally multicolored, like they're um, fluorescent colors. And I just quickly searched on Amazon for white and brown, like neutral toned post-its and they exist and I was like, girls, is it okay if we use these? Because the, the very intense colors are really jarring to me. That is the type of person that I am. And 
the beautiful thing about being humans is we don't have to understand people, but we can accept them. <laughs> and just because, you know, you may not understand why I am the way that I am, hopefully you might get a few tips along the way. Like I just, I find this is such a, a therapeutic and actually really productive practice for me as a, as a person, just with keeping on top of things, but also enjoying my home and my life in a really wonderful way. You'll know that, um, bringing more joy into my life is something that I try to do a lot of, whether that's through animals, experiences, refreshes, whatever. I find that that brings more joy into my life. If you haven't tried it, maybe try it. Something just as small as a fresh candle and a potted plant is really quite something. It's, it's really special. And just the, the act of taking care of something, the act, the ritual of, finding a new playlist, lighting a candle. I find that very much um, an act of self-care. So maybe this is the time for you to just try it. Try, you don't have to go all out like me. You don't have to be extra. I know I'm like, but you could try it. I mean, you, you never know, you might like it. Anyway, candle. Okay, the candle that I chose, I ordered it next day delivery on Jo Malone. This is, the Wild Berry and Bramble Scented Candle. Now, this is very, very beautiful in its packaging, which kind of makes me want to steal it for my dressing room. But it's also the kind of packaging that you will like keep and keep and keep. So I wasn't too sort of upset because it's very neutral, goes in your home. I just think that everything that Jo Malone does is spectacular. It's been a brand that I have loved for such a long time and they even scented my wedding. I wore their perfume on my wedding and if I was having an autumn wedding this is what I would use to scent my my wedding it is so so incredibly beautiful it kind of reminds me if you think about the sharpness of the Dalesford tomato vine candle so it has that sharpness that green kind of freshness to it but then it has this sweet berry undertone that makes it feel really cozy. So I treated myself to one of their candles because um, these are like 100 pounds, which is a, a lot for a candle. However, what I am gonna do is they sell their oil diffuser of this particular fragrance as well. And they come in like a bottle like this. And I don't know if you watched the video, but I made up my own berry diffusers using a Joe Loves fragrance, which is still going strong in my dressing room. And I think I might buy two of those and just decant little bits into my little homemade diffusers. There is a fly. <laughs> um, into my little diffusers with some reeds because you can buy the bottles for the reed diffusers on Amazon. You can buy little sticks and you can make them up yourself. I think you can get the oils for about 80 pounds. I don't need the branded Jo Malone diffusers in all honesty, I just don't. So this is a way to thread this fragrance through your house. And I tell you what, if you haven't done it today, go through your house, turn over all your reeds on your reed diffusers and the fragrance that greets you in your home is quite wonderful. So that is my fragrance of choice for this particular autumn uh, season and install. Before we get into what's behind me, I have someone that you might like to meet. Daddy, Daddy, come here, come and sit. You can't really see her. Oh my goodness. She's very excited because when she's around Barclay, they are absolute like thick as thieves. And Porter is now jealous, but this is Tatty and this is Bolly's sister and Porty and Barclay's new friend. And when I have to be honest, I think that Barclay and her are like besties. I'm gonna put her down, but welcome to the crew. I mean, she's so big now because um, she's been here a while, but I haven't had a chance to show you. Oh, you little scrublet. Little scrublet. Oh, look at that schnoot. Okay. It's always her and Barkley together. Always. Hello, Bolly Moo. Bolly Moo, you've been rolling in the chicken poo. You've been rolling in the chicken poo. You have. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
They're just pumpkins. I know you're excited for autumn decor, but they're pumpkins. They're not for you. It is autumn install day. And this is what we have just unboxed from West Home Interiors. I have a discount for these, by the way. It is Lydia 10. And I absolutely fell in love with these when I was sent these. They're all made from natural materials. We've got these beautiful woven wools. We've got jute, seagrass, these cute little wool ones, which I think if you're planning on throwing like a, an autumn tablescape or birthday party or Halloween party, these would make really, really good little place settings but they're such a good one for just sort of throwing on a table because I haven't dressed this table. These are still those random, uh, I think they're carnations that um, I picked up from Waitrose, but just watch this. You can just throw a selection onto the table to give it a bit of a theme. But what I actually saw was um, on, oh, a little bit zoomed in there. What I actually saw was on Pinterest, someone had a basket of wheat. You have this little champagne basket of wheat by the door and someone had actually popped some pumpkins in there. So I might give that a try as well. Porty off. Oh. It's just a way of creating a little sausage dog friendly. No, not for Porty. A little sausage dog decor. And no, boys, look at this. Look at this. Off you get. No. And you'll know that this just kind of lends itself to everything that I enjoy. So this beautiful antique champagne crate is just it just looks gorgeous then with the natural textures of the wheat and the pumpkins but it just gives it that seasonal element however we are moving this away from naughty sausage dogs away away there is also these adorable acorns which you can use for place settings as well but they're just lovely for putting on like shelves bookshelves just adding a little bit of seasonal decor and you can bring them out year on year if you've got a place to store them and they're so versatile, you can pop them on the table, you can pop them in the garden if you want, obviously weather dependent. Um, just a really lovely addition. So my code is Lydia10 if you wanted to pick these up for your seasonal decor this autumn. I love the texture of this one. It looks so rustic. Like you can just imagine this on a sort of console table somewhere just to add that little seasonal element. So I'll link all of these in the description box down below. And now I'm going to get ready for Gemma to arrive. I told you, these two are best friends. Besties! Yes! As always with install days, you get a shot of the floor in my hallway because Gemma arrives and just kind of brings in all of this beautiful foliage. And we've got the ivy that I was talking about. We've got these beautiful baskets. We've got a wreath. I feel like I haven't had a wreath for such a long time. There's ferns. Oh my gosh, look at this one standing to attention and hops. All of the good stuff. As mentioned, it is going to be carnage today. Not only is there four happy puppies, little tatty under there, um, but we've got a full house. But we're going to tackle the kitchen first and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove everything that's sort of foliage wise, decor wise, that isn't always going to be in here. And we're just going to put in the bits and pieces that Gemma has brought with her today and then um, add in any bits here and there that we think will be a good addition to the autumn decor. So that is the first point of what we're going to do. Okay, right, so I'm going to move all the greenery on the table outside. The figures panel. Yes, yeah, we'll just get it all out so it doesn't Okay, 
Okay, right, so this is to go... So I put that on like an angle on the table or on the island. What? So my thoughts were for the kitchen was kind of, you know, bringing people back inside, cooking, cozy sunny roasts. Ooh. So like herbs. Yeah, so yeah. Wintry. Winter herbs. Yeah. So Lovely. that's where I've gone with the rosemary, rosemary. sage. <laughs> and then the time. Yeah. What are you thinking? Yeah, like that kind of. Well, I think it is safe to say that this is my favorite autumn install yet. I frantically messaged Gemma the other night and I said, I want some hops either to go over the fireplace or to go over the cooker. And I feel like this has added the character to the kitchen that I've always wanted, even from like this angle. Like, look at that, how gorgeous that looks with all of the tones. Wow, we're just finishing off everything else and just tidying up and decluttering. Now we are popping some little planters on the table. So we've got this beautiful thyme basket, which, are you gonna sell them? I think so. Yeah, I think that you'll be able to buy this, which is so lovely, because it looks like a little truck and it will smell incredible. Oh, it smells so good. And then we've got uh, rosemary, sage. So it means that we've got sort of autumn, winter, planting uh, herb planting that can be used in cooking so if you think about with your roast potatoes and your lamb and the rosemary and the thyme and the sage or oh, sage with like bacon and um cream cheese pasta oh so so good um so yeah i don't know whether we should put a runner of some sort yeah, just to sort of frame it a little yeah. bit Ah, welcome home, Lumi, to the madhouse. Welcome home. These will be linked down below to Gemma's website. And very, very good. Good morning, everyone. It is a stunningly misty, foggy morning. And this is autumn overlapping with the usual summer weather because we've got the sun streaming through. But there's this little dusting of, wow, look, you can barely see that tree there. I think that kind of puts it across. You've got the crows. My goodness, what a morning. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my under eyes are so bright. Um, they're blinding. Anyway, last night um, after Gemma left, I got the most intense headache and um, needed to have a nap. So nothing else was done. The day just completely ran away with us and we're finishing things off today, which actually works really well because I don't think I would have been able to have carried on anyway. So I'm gonna get my clothes on and get downstairs. The kitchen looks amazing. I've completely decluttered in there and it looks lovely, but we're just gonna finish off a few other bits around the house. So I'm gonna put probably some comfy clothes on today. It's so fresh and frosty outside. Well, it's not frosty, but it's like, it's getting there. Gemma has just arrived and we are twinning. Is it brushed cotton? It is like a brushed cotton, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, so. it's like a flannel. The, yeah, the softest. So soft. Both and Blake shirts. Well, she's wearing the grey one. I'm wearing the sage green one. She was like, "Oh, this is this is cute." Got the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go team. <laughs> we are going to finish off in the living room. My port of call is organisation, um, tidying, faffing. Gemma is going to finish off this display. So these are her preserved leaves. These are much more muted on in person and not on on the camera they're a bit sort of warmer and what we're doing and this is something that you can do if you get some wire i'll show you what Gemma's doing she's attaching them to sturdy twigs to create you know like my the the really sort of big branches that i like to get from the garden to create things here and they never last long enough well what she's done is she's attached the sprigs to these bits of wood so you can create that really wild and wonderful display. And because these are preserved, they're going to last the entirety of autumn. We need to find a way to do this with other preserved. The only thing I've, I've found is I've struggled with the color of the green preserved leaves. But anyway, we've got one more bit to sort of go here that's gonna be super big. So we're gonna get a big branch, attach it to there, and I'll show you because it's really clever. And then if you strategically place these lower sprigs, they hide the joins and it just looks really really lovely 
So I'm getting all of the cushions out because we have um, some sunshine at the moment and I just want it to feel really lovely for when Ali gets home and the house to be fully dressed. So that's my job. Isn't it, Bordy? Isn't it? So this is Gemma attaching both of the sprigs together before attaching them to these twigs. So she's actually gonna go for two twigs joined together in order to create this really, really nice long branch that Beach doesn't have, but never mind. <laughs> we do what we want. <laughs> right. So clever. And this is just floristry wire. Yeah, binding wire. And you can just get that on Amazon, can't yeah, you? I think so. That's so clever. But I came in yesterday and I was like, oh, I think it's a bit samey what on the, of the room. I think it's a bit samey on here. I, I, have got, I don't mean the colours of your, I mean the colours of the. Thing. Yeah, I think this looks too symmetrical, even though they're different. I think it looks too symmetrical. So I definitely think some wheat yes. in this one yeah. would, would be softer and I think it looks nicer with the tones yep, totally. over here as well. I think that's good. You're doing wheat, aren't I've you? I'm doing wheat. I'm doing it wheat next month. I haven't actually put it up this month. Ah, okay. Because I thought I'd do a little kind of gradual autumn. This, this, this oh yeah, because obviously autumn is like a slow... Well, yeah, especially this year. Yeah, it's a weird one. We like getting summer when we should be getting autumn. You could do it to a Traditional. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's the only thing I think now. Oh, and obviously cover up the. Yeah, it needs something. Yeah. Here. Oh, sorry. Oh, Forget it, brother. It's always me going in and ruining it. There we go. That's it. You actually didn't need more. It's just this one. Someone's like. It's not perfect. Yeah, actually, that's right. That isn't is it? really good. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I think that's spot on. Yeah. Okay, I'll let you like judge. And then I'll take this one in for us to do with the wheat. Little boys, you have too many toys. And we have achieved what we set out to achieve. Um, this very, very lovely wild display of the beech leaves, which looks so like almost like autumn firework which I just love and it just everything just looks so beautiful in this black background it just feels so dramatic the next thing so what we were going to do we were going to pop some hops on um, the fireplace but I actually think it will be too much with uh, this display in the corner so we're just going to have a little bit of wheat here and what I've realized with the displays especially with dried displays is if you use too many different stems it looks like an arrangement and I think the thing about dried or preserved leaves is that it looks good when you just keep it to one thing like you've just sort of picked a bunch shoved it in a vase and it looks lovely and that is definitely the learning that we took from yesterday so here we're going to pop some wheat I think it will complement this area really nicely um, and maybe I'll swap out for a different book who knows now this is where I popped all of the other greenery that was in this room before however um, I think that down here we need a little bit of organization because it looks a bit messy and unconsidered and just have a rethink of what's on here and whether we need everything on this side as it is but I do quite like it and the greenery actually complements really nicely with the um, cushions I think that looks quite lovely but I do want to get my bookcase in here as well oh maybe I'll measure up for the bookcase Gemma has just left and it has turned into the most glorious day and I thought I would show you everything that we've done today. Just a few finishing little tidbits, but I have um, opened up the terrace because even though it's cold this morning, the sun is now out. And I actually think I am going to take my makeup off my face and just let my skin breathe. I feel like my face just needs to be out in the air and in the sunshine. So I'm gonna spend some time potting and gardening for the rest of the day, but not before I show you what um, we've done. Not huge amounts out here. I actually planted up um, some beautiful little violas in this planter a couple of days ago. I didn't realize Gemma had done violas, but there, it was all the 
um, garden centre had and I thought I'd give this a bit of a refresh. Then we've got the angel vine on the fire pit which looks really lovely and I would say that if you're having potted plants um, on surfaces to add like greenery always have some evergreen. This is myrtle in a little wicker planter. It means that as the season progresses you've still got some greenery on the, the terrace which can sometimes look a little bit bare so um, we always have these but then we'll add like smaller pots of flowers obviously we've potted up these violas for when we had Lauren and her husband over I have some potting to do down at the outdoor kitchen um, I've potted up this big basil plant here and I'm going to pot this mint this rosemary and do that in the kitchen garden I also have to harvest a huge amount of tomatoes. I should have done it yesterday and I'm going to start doing some chutney. I've checked in with the orchard next door to see if we can get some apples so um, I can make a uh, spiced apple chutney again. Then in the living room we finally, finally got the look right on this display here and I love it. I have to say autumn for this corner display is always the best because it, you can do preserved and it just lasts so long when I do the branches not so much um, but as we said we kind of DIY'd this Gemma used her initiative and DIY'd it and it looks really lovely and then on this one we've got some lovely dried wheat which I always just think looks so effective um, in this corner here it looks lovely with all of these tones on the back here it's still looking like this I still need to do a bit of organization down the bottom haven't got around to that yet um, we've got a little sprig of hops in my wicker basket that hangs just there, which I think connects everything really nicely. And on these sides, I've used the West Home Interiors uh, jute pumpkins, just to show you, because these aren't gonna come out until October. So I am gonna put these away until then. I always keep the pumpkins as an October specific decor thing. So um, if you're looking for something that is more rustic, will fit with your neutral tones of your interior, I find these a really, really good option. Um, I think it ties in really nicely. If you're not growing your own gourds, if you're not gonna have those kinds of things, these are so lovely. I saw Mrs. Alice using these in her tablescapes as well. And I think if you're gonna be doing any autumnal parties, they just work really lovely and you can just add them in even here with this little herb display. Ow, <laughs> stubbed my blooming toe. Um, even just like this, everything ties in beautifully with the green little touch of copper for warmth and these are definitely my favorite ones i tend to go for these much more rustic ones i think the wool ones were really lovely i think they'd work probably better in a children's bedroom something a bit softer like that or a playroom but just sporadically throughout there for a little pumpkin extravaganza on the table that's still very very nice and natural that is also an option uh, so I'll link the ones that I think are my probably my favorites in the description box down below so that you can shop those with my discount code now this is my favorite and Gemma tells me that you guys don't really buy into the ivy so much and that shocks me so much because I know I've mentioned it before but ivy is such a great um, like oxygenator for a home but it lasts lasts so so well first and foremost which I just love I love when something thrives indoors and still looks green obviously it's an evergreen so it lasts through the years it looks so beautiful and wild I think maybe ivy gets a bad rep because it's often seen as like invasive like a bit of a sort of pest of a plant maybe and also it's um you know you get like poison ivy things like that it's so funny isn't it that you can choose to see beauty in whatever you want and I honestly think that ivy is one of my favorite plants of them all I see it as something that is actually resilient and hangs on in difficult times and makes a home for itself in areas where it may not where most other plants maybe wouldn't be able to and it's funny I think it's all just a perspective thing really isn't it but we've popped it in my little antique galvanized planter under here which you're just sort of seeing there but like I said you might not like ivy I love ivy I think it has such a gorgeous look to it then into the bedroom which unfortunately our curtains have been broken so um I have to sort of do 
with it like that at the moment. Um, just some dried wheat in an old pickling jar. I think the tones work beautifully in this room. Really, really lovely. And then we've got some dried thyme behind my Stanley cup. Oh, the realities of home life. Uh, beautiful dried thyme. I think, again, those tones in there, really lovely. And then a view into my bathroom that I actually probably should have checked if it's all okay in here. Um, we've gone back to the hops in here. Ali loved the hops in here and so did I. I believe Gemma will be doing these on Hello Petal as well so you can buy the bunches. She isn't, uh, from what I understand, planning on doing the garland over the cooker that we have. My beautiful garland, she's not doing it. And I just love it. I think this is my new favorite vignette of the house. Oh my gosh. I love it. Um, but no, she's not going to be selling these. So um, if she if she doesn't, I'll find a place where you can buy them as well if you'd like to. The last place to show you is my dressing room. However, the herb, little herb selection on here, um, you can buy. I believe she's going to be doing the thyme trug here as well. Winter appropriate herbs there that will look really, really lovely and be useful, which is always a good one. Hello, my small boy. I don't think they can even see you sitting down there. They can't even see you sitting down there. Oh, oh, downward doggy, downward doggy. Oh my goodness me. Hello. And then in the dressing room, we have had a change from the bay trees, I'm gonna pop the bay trees into my greenhouse for some some time out, I think, just to get them fighting fit again. So we've gone for these ferns. Now they make me nervous, these ferns, because they um, ferns are difficult indoors. So I'm gonna give them my best shot, but I love them so much. Gemma really liked this and I was like, oh, I'm not sure. And now I feel like it's like growing on me. I just like them a bit taller usually. And then Ivy on the center island, this was already here. We didn't replace this. And again, look at this. Like I love the way it's so perfect to like stretch out over a, 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 like the side of a console or something like that. It just looks so lovely. How can you not like Ivy? It's just gorgeous. Like when you get these new little baby leaves. Oh, it's just spectacular. I love it. Well, makeup is off. However, very interesting turn of events for the day. My phone has completely and utterly died on me. Just out of the blue. No reason. Funny that, that it's going to be the launch of the, the 15 in like a couple of days. And this is gone. However, I'm going to embrace it. I've got text messages on my laptop. So if anyone needs to text me, <laughs> that's on there. And I'm just gonna read my book. That was a welcomed little lunch break. I'm now going to deal with the washing machines and I need to refill the corn for the chickens so that we can take them their little corn supplies. Also, I've just been in the garden doing a bit of, uh, a bit of watering and um, I had the second bug down my top this year. And in all honesty, I can't, first of all, it was a bee and this one I think was a spider. And obviously it's strapless straight down <laughs> me running around the garden I can only imagine how it looks on my cctv <laughs> oh dear oh my goodness me okay oh, this is not done yet so let's release it from its tangles and pop it back in another spin there we go right corn refill That is the sound of maintenance for the tumble dryer. So you have to remove all of the fluff. And in true Lydia Millen house <laughs> theme, we have green and white. <laughs> there we go. My next job is to harvest all of my little tiny tomatoes and plan what I'm gonna do with them.
With that many tomatoes, you have to do a tomato risotto for when Ali gets home. He's just on the phone, but we've got sourdough, I've got a glass of wine, I've got the lovely sounds of someone mowing their lawn, but generally it's usually us doing that, so I don't mind. And flowers, beautiful views. Good morning everyone from my lovely cozy kitchen. I have to say Ali came home yesterday and said this is the coziest addition to our kitchen I think that we have ever had. I'm going make up free for the majority of the day um, and then this evening I'm going to Carrie's mum and dad's farm for Opera Fest which they're holding there. So I wanted a day in the garden because I actually didn't end up spending as much time like pottering as I wanted to yesterday. Mainly because, and I don't know why this would affect it in this way because I certainly didn't need my phone to potter, but when my phone stopped working I was like, oh, I'm just gonna finish my book. Obviously I have been reading the, um, the rose garden for a few weeks now and it's not like it's not gripping in in like in that way which obviously is not really you know i'm not really into gripping things anyway um it's just been a really nice slow read you know when you see people online they're like read this book this week read this book in two days and i'm like gosh i never get through books that quickly and i'm like removing that pressure that i'm unnecessarily placing on myself and just taking my time with books and so it's taken me i think about a month don't hold me to that because i often get it wrong um, but I think it's taken me about a month. I finally finished it. It was such a lovely book. So many subtle lessons that I really, really enjoyed. And it was just lovely to have made it through. I think I had like a third left of the book yesterday evening and I just read all evening and it has put back into perspective my need to like distance myself from my phone and just, I don't know about you, but like, it really put into perspective how much more time I would have if I had a better relationship with my phone and what I do on it. One of the things that I've noticed is one of the most positive apps that I use is probably Pinterest. The feelings that it evokes in me is, is so much more positive. I feel inspired, I feel ready to go and do things and stuff like that, which is not a feeling that I often get from other apps. I'm gonna try and work out a way for me to be less sort of on my phone. It's now working as well. So it started working this morning and instantly I was back on there and I was like, no, Lydia. So I've taken the opportunity to finish a podcast that um, I started yesterday. In all honesty, this I've had to pause it because it's such a good podcast. Um, it's with Jamila Jamil and Lewis Howes. Never listened to any of his podcast, but this is where I find TikTok really positive because it's how I found the minimalists. I was served a sound bite from one of their podcasts. I was also served a sound bite from this particular podcast and it instantly gripped my attention. I went and I downloaded it and I listened to the podcast. I'm halfway through at the moment and never has there been a better articulated approach to the discussions of cultures that we see at the moment. And I'm not going to do it justice by talking about it and I feel like some people obviously want all of the uplifting content on my channel and I have a lot of feelings around cultures online, having experienced a lot of them, having experienced the shame, the fear, the, the feelings of hopelessness that come with a lot of the cultures that are experienced online. If you're interested in it or even if you want to maybe learn different ways to conduct yourself online maybe you're someone that when you see the downfall of someone you often point and laugh or you join in or you decide to make a video about it or something like that i really think that this podcast like it hits home for the people that have experienced the cultures like me like many others in in this industry and then it also talks from the perspective of the perpetrator as well because jamila jamil fully holds her hands up and says i have done it and I think that it's such an interesting conversation and it fills me with hope that, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna get emotional. It's been a hard week, guys. <laughs> but it fills me with hope that now that other people are talking about this kind of thing, that maybe we might start to change as a society and how we treat people because 
we've got to like this this standard where we hold people where we can't make mistakes we can't say say stupid things we can't fall over our words or have a lapse of a moment of of perspective or clarity and the unkindness that we show people in that moment really is quite sad and it's something that has hung heavy on me because I'm part of this like I'm in this industry and I live in this industry like for my work but I'm so saddened by the way that we treat people in this industry, in our cultures, and the fact that it's being spoken about now by other people, people that are far more articulate, articulate than me. I think that that gives me hope, which I've often felt like I'd be like dead by the time we realize how we've spent the last few years treating people who have made mistakes or treating people that maybe aren't as, I don't know, um, what's the word, like, how do I put it, like, aren't as good at, like, articulating themselves or talking about difficult subjects, and it, give, it just gives me hope that we're walking in the right direction. You might not want to listen to it, because I know that lots of you don't watch my channel for that kind of stuff, but perhaps you're a creator that's watching it and you've experienced it, and maybe you've, you're still processing it. It's a really helpful conversation that maybe just gives you hope that we haven't like lost all of that. And so, sorry for getting upset. I, <laughs> I know <laughs> I'm a nightmare and I've gone like a few vlogs without crying, but this is the new me. I used to be the Lydia that doesn't cry and now I'm the Lydia whose heart has been um, melted by, I don't know, by so many things. And by the way, this isn't me, I, I'm not wanting anyone to feel sorry for me in this. But anyway, I am going to get on and um, do some things in the garden. I want to pot up some um, plants. I want to sow some, some more pea shoots because I ended up buying some more little pea shoots on Amazon so that I can plant some. Because I honestly, I think that they're the best things that you can grow in like your kitchen and just add to things like on your eggs, on your salad, on your risottos, everything. It literally goes on everything. So um, I need to sort of pot them up because once they start to grow, it's really good. You can snip, 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 but you have to repot them. You have to re you have to re sow um, again because otherwise they go over and they go to seed and they go to flower, or whatever. So that's my plan of action. It's very chilly in the mornings at the moment and it's really lovely, but I just, I feel like I'm living between two worlds at the moment because I'm wearing dresses and then I'm cold and then I need to put on something like warmer for the evenings. It's very strange, but the doors are open. It's a really, really lovely day. Chick chicks are living their best life. Pottering around in there. Hello Gwyneth, hello. I'm just doing some pot clearing, but I don't know if you can see on my glove there, there is a little hornet. And as much as hornets are not good for bees, they always serve a purpose, don't they? And so I am trying to be a brave girl and get it outside because it's not good for it to be in here. I know that's what Ali would want me to do. Um, it's very interesting as a creature. I think he's tired, but I just don't know how to pick up the glove. Maybe if I get it on here. See, look, he flinches whenever I go near him. Here, yeah, come on. If you jump on it, maybe. If I get him on here. Sorry, this is very scary because hornets are not for the faint hearted. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm doing this. <gasps> I can't believe I'm doing this. He's looking right at me. Oh my goodness. There you go, little hornet. There you go. Fly away. Fly away, little hornet. Go on. She get you to some water or something. I don't want you to drown. I know this is what Ali would do. Come on. Fly away. Just don't fly at me. Oh, I think he might have a bad wing. His wing looks a little bit feathery. It's all right. <laughs> Puts his little hand up whenever I do that. <laughs> Well, at least he's outside, or she, or whatever she is. You can't see me, but I'm doing a little bit of pot clearing, so these are all cleared. I think I'm gonna use these two for some pea shoots, and then these slightly taller ones for um, some violas that I picked up. 
and I'll dot the violas around the patio just a little bit or maybe even on the outdoor kitchen but this is the thing I would say is it's really good about when you buy Gemma's little kits is that you get the pots and you just reuse them and you can use them like you can even do your own little displays obviously you know that but I just think it's so lovely if you see one of her things that you like you can just buy it and then pot up your own bits and pieces so my husband kindly filled up my soil bucket which means I can pot up with ease so I'm only going to do one pot at a time but I'm going to have one prepped to go you actually won't believe what I just did I picked up the glove and I've popped the hornet on here I need to clean our little um, bird bath but I'm hoping in fact I'm going to fill it up with some fresh water so that it can drink and then when you finish drinking I'll give this a bit of a scrub let's try and get it up so that you can drink it all and you don't have to get in the water there we go don't you dare fall in don't make me come and save you don't be scared of the water I think you need some maybe you need a grape I know you like grapes because you've eaten all of mine. I'm watching it clean itself. I'm gonna get you a grape. You see, they've all been eating the grapes, but if I take one and smush it, hopefully you can get some sugar. There you go, have some of that. There you go, don't be scared of it, you silly moo. Yeah, my gosh, he's going to it. Well done. Well done. done. I feel quite proud of myself for that to be honest <laughs> but I've got pea shoots twinkle to pop into my pots and um, I'm gonna prep this one and water this one for the kitchen side. It doesn't need to be loads to be honest otherwise it's just wasteful. Next I am potting up these violas. These are viola rocky white and I'm gonna pot them in some of those bigger pots. These are also edible, so what you can do is pick them, eat them, they have some nutritional value, but um, another good thing is to press them and dry them and you can use them on cakes throughout the winter or early spring. But I've got a little friendly fly who's showing them some love at the moment, so I think I'm gonna get the rest of these potted up as much as possible. one little viola in this little pot. I can't help myself. Oh, so cute. Oh my goodness me. So cute. Just look at them, keeping an eye on me all the time. <laughs> come on. Woody, come. No, not interested. All they want to do is keep an eye on me. Okay, herbs are all done. This one needs a little bit of uh, extra TLC, I think. Why are you so blurry? There we go. Yeah, a little herb trio there that I've done just myself with some plants that I had in pots in my greenhouse. Um, just makes it easy for a little bit of seasoning. Maybe some thyme would be good on here as well. By the way, I have to let you know, I saved the hornet. It was on the grape for a good 45 minutes. And now, He's gone, flew away. I saved him. I can't believe he was gonna die. Anyway, I've potted up the herbs. I've now had a really good potting session of violas and ferns. So I think I'm gonna refresh Ali's office and pop a little fern on his desk. I think he will love that. The violas are gonna stay outside. As much as I wish I could bring these tiny baby pots inside, I don't think they do pretty well. I have a few more to pot up. I've got some ivy and some ferns. I might do like a bigger planter of ferns, but I haven't decided. And then I think I'll do these ivy in these pots as well. Pea shoots are potted and on the windowsill. I've added some of the viola to the terrace as well. Well, I had it already on the table here and here, but I wanted to see some of them out of the window. So I popped the little tiny baby pot and the planter and the sort of medium one. There's also some you might be able to see over on the 
outdoor kitchen. I just popped a few pots. Just when you've got like a few of them, you might as well just use them. And um, yeah, so this has now got some pots on here and looking lovely. I have added this fern into Ali's office, which overlooks the kitchen garden. So this is on here next to a picture of me, Lumi and Porty, and also a picture of Ali with my two nephews. I have also added a little fern to the desk as well, but he may think this is too small. He may want a big one. Excuse me, are you licking my toes? Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh. Now, it hasn't been as sunny as I would have hoped today, but I have to crack on because I'm going to bake some cake, bake a cake. Um, I'm also going to bring some crisps. I need to harvest some carrots and cut them into batons and bring some carrots and hummus, just basically for the picnic. So I'm gonna start off with the cake because while that's in the oven, that can do its thing. And basically I've found the cake recipe that's just ignited within me a joy of baking. And I think I've got mud all over my face, so I apologize, but that's what happens. Um, I'm gonna wash my hands, of course, because I've been out in the garden, but I'm gonna bake myself cake, get it in there, and um, take that with me, and then I need to get myself ready. Look at the state of me, I can't go like this. I need to transform into a princess. But first and foremost, I have more jobs to do. So, where is? an apron, although I love I'm putting on an apron when I've just been wiping my hands on um, my dress the entire day because I didn't put on my gardening apron, but never mind, I've got this lovely pink one from Chalk Pink Linen, so I'll pop that on. Goodness me, right. Scrub hands, cake, first and foremost. Okay, clean kitchen so I can mess it up. <laughs> but first, before I do any sort of baking, I'm just gonna eat something quickly because there is some leftover risotto from yesterday that I can have with some sourdough, which is a good start. And you don't need to see me eating that, but here is said leftover risotto, which I'm gonna heat up, which you probably shouldn't, but oh well. Thermomix mixing bowl. I'm going to need two of these, but one of them is currently in the, in the dishwasher. So I'm going to get this ready and my ingredients ready for the cake. Now, this is one of those cakes, which is like caking, caking? Caking for dummies. Um, it is, you just basically bung everything in the, in the Thermomix. It whizzes it up and then you put it in a tin. Now it's made for a loaf cake. I don't know what it is about me, but I prefer round cakes. So I do it in a round cake tin, which just makes me happy. And you bake it in the oven for like 45 to 50 minutes. In all honesty, it's usually 50 minutes. And what did they say for me to do? Ah, this time though, I'm adapting it slightly. I spoke to the girls and I found that it was um, getting too brown around the edges. So I've turned, I'm gonna turn it down and cook it for 50 minutes this time. So ingredients. Now this is a lemon drizzle cake, but I always add berries, and this time I think I'm gonna add raspberries and blueberries into the batter, um, and then that's not part of the recipe. I just poke them in and kind of hope for the best, and then drizzle on top. That's all you need to do. So ingredients, ingredients, ingredients. First up, two, oh my gosh, do we have lemons? <laughs> Are we falling at the first hurdle? We are falling, no we're not, we're not falling at the first hurdle. We have lemons, caster sugar, unsalted butter, three large eggs, three large eggs. And I believe this is Bluebell providing the goods on this occasion. Self-raising flour and milk, which I can get out later because I'm going to eat my food first. I feel like I've spent a bit too much time pottering in the garden and not enough time preparing. That is piping hot. Perfect portion. Oh. Zest of two lemons, 50 grams of, of caster sugar in the Thermomix with. Then you put the remaining 125 grams of caster sugar in. Generally, I tend to just put about 
10 grams less of sugar because I'm not so sweet in everything. I mean, I'm sweet. I'm just not that sweet. Time for 175 grams of unsalted, except every time I make this cake, I use salted butter and I don't notice. Now the hen's eggs, looking lovely. And I have to say, you have to really, really screw this up to mean that this cake doesn't work. Like you really have to like miss something out if it doesn't work because this cake just, it just works every time. Famous last words, oh my God, touch wood. <laughs> Self-raising flour, I'm using gluten-free. Have a grease spin. There we go. Milk. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the easiest cake in the world. I'm now going to transfer the batter into the tin, plop in some fruit, a load of berries here, just plunk it in. Let's get some blueberries in there. And there we go, ready to go into the oven. Now these usually kind of sink into the cake um, so they don't sit on top like this, but she's going in. Whilst the cake bakes, I'm going to dig up a few carrots for crudités. Waterproof herringbone blanket. I got this from Amazon. This is such a necessity. We use these when um, we're sitting outside, but they're also great if you have pets that have been ill or going through a rough time and maybe urinating in places that they shouldn't. These are amazing because they blend in with the decor. It's also good for putting on your sofas and things like that if you've got children, because this side is completely waterproof. They wash amazingly and they look lovely as well. Hurricane Lydia has erupted. I don't even know how we're going to sort this out in the time that I've got left, but we're going with it. Crisps, two packets, because I know what we like. Tomatoes, which are probably gonna go everywhere, but who cares. Carrot sticks. Hummus. Well, I'll be damned. We've gone from Gardener's World to Miss World. <laughs> I'm joking. In about an hour, <laughs> I am ready and I'm getting my cost per wear from this dress. Pop you there. Um, I've got this dual shirt dress with some Jimmy Choo sneakers, which used to be white, but are now a kind of creamy off-white. Um, I'm not taking my camera with me, so we're going over to the iPhone. So I will see you when we get to Opera Fest. Oh, wow. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I love how you've all gone silent behind me. Oh, yeah. yeah, so you're in your own love. Uh, <laughs> of course you are. The, is that the stage that your dad built? Yeah. Wow. wow. All of the crisps are coming out. Got a pork pie, hummus. It's hard. All of the stuff. Yeah, George is here. Welcome to the vlog, George. Bye. <laughs> yeah. I think they've met George before. Have they? Oh, they've seen me popping oh. fuchsias in my Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my favourite pastime. Can <laughs> <laughs> you please turn your phones off? Oh, no, I'm about no. to film you. I can't do that. No. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. I'll put it for five Welcome then to this spectacular, beautiful venue and magnificent erection. <laughs> Deserving Karen. our first of many rounds of applause. <laughs> so cultured.
What? What? <laughs> we're going to warm you up all evening. We're going to particularly warm you up now with a, with a little medley. Kitchen This is the field of Carrie's mum and dad's house and um, it's down the bottom here where they've got it all set up for Opera Fest. There's loads of people here, there's a food van, there's a bar and we have plonked ourselves right at the front if you hadn't realised so that we've got full view and then this is the uh, emergency vehicle. Who's that sir? Are you on your own? <laughs> Is anybody not feeling romantic? <clears throat> Don't say yes. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, if you're That's struggling to feel the romance, we're going to get you. In fact, Neil's going to get you in a mood, okay? Yeah. Oh, he's coming. He's coming out. I oh, know. I'm coming out. Here we go. Right, so what I'd like you to do, ladies and gentlemen, if you can all put one of your hands in the air for me. Okay? Yeah, just one of them. You're all right. Not the other one. So keep it up there. Keep it up there. Now, what I want you to do is, I want you to put that hand onto the knee of the person sitting next to you. <laughs> How does that feel? Come on, boys, don't be shy. Here we go. Is it good? Is it good? <laughs> That's his shoulder. I know. I can't reach his knee. <laughs> is this like a weird game of Twister? George is like, I've got two women touching me. This is my worst thing. I want you to imagine that you're on a sunny beach in Spain. This is called Granada. All right. These two are. Yeah, yeah. having a moment. It's alright with me. Take it away, Neil. Piano solo. Here we go. Amazing. Oh, and so che un sogno così non ritorni mai più. Love. A new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. <laughs> 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 